Hey guys, Josh with the Depth Tape Channel, and in this video we're going to be discussing the little known about Caterpillar on highway transmission. Now, most of you probably don't know that Cat actually made an on highway transmission. Now, of course, Cat makes drivetrain components for all sorts of different pieces of equipment, and of course, pretty much all of them are automatic transmissions. So I'm sure Cat thought, hey, why don't we put an automatic transmission behind our very popular truck engines at the time? Now, Cat doesn't produce this engine, at least in the on highway application anymore. And they only made them for a few years and not in a lot of applications. So not a lot of people have seen them or worked on them. I've had the uh, honor of working on quite a few of them over the years. I'm not an expert on them. I've never done a full rebuild on one, but I have pulled out several of them and troubleshot many of them over my years as a cat truck mechanic. So I figured, hey, this is a product that probably not a lot of people have heard about. So I'll tell you what I know about them and what I found out about them and what I couldn't find out about them. But let's get into the video. Okay, so let's discuss some of the flavors of the cat on highway transmission. First off, they were all automatics. They only made three different models of them. And they started production towards the end of 2006, but they didn't go on anything until the 2007 model year, which model years are kind of weird. You know, something can be built in 06, but it's actually an 07 model year. You know, you can be buying a, a 2022 car before it's even 2022. It's That stuff's a little weird. The transmission models were the CX-28, the CX-31, and the CX-35. Now, I spent a good amount of time trying to find out, obviously, C, X would be cat, and then X is kind of universal for transmission. I couldn't find what the 28, the 31, or the 35 actually meant. There's probably people watching this video that do, do know what it means, though. Either they work for Caterpillar, or they're more knowledgeable. If, if you do know, leave a comment in the section. I'll pin it to the top so people know what the actual numbers meant. But anyway... The numbers did correlate with what size engine they went to. And as far as I know, you could only get a CAT transmission if it was behind a CAT engine. Now, the CX-28 was the smallest of the models, and it would go behind. The only ones I ever saw it was on the C9S. Now, these were also only on the Regen Assert engines. So, since it was 2007, it was going behind the 2007 model year engines. Not the best combination to have a C9S engine and a CAT automatic transmission. Now, it also, the CX-31, that would generally be behind a C13 engine. And the first few years, so the model year 2007 up to the CAT truck production time, which is 2012, was only in tour bus and RV applications. I've never seen in that era a cat transmission in a truck, only in RVs and tour buses. Now this transmission from what I could find was based on a similar automatic that they put in articulated haul trucks and cat apparently still uses a very similar design to this day. And this design is called an ECPC transmission, electronic clutch pressure control, which means it's an automatic so it uses transmission fluid through a torque converter and it's controlled by an electronic control module and that regulates all the pressures to the different clutches through solenoids and it uses a planetary gear system this isn't like an older design transmission where it had belts and bands and stuff like that it was a planetary now the transmission itself from what i could see was well designed the solenoids were easy to get to. You could test them individually. Uh, it was easy to access the transmission software because the software was the same on all the CAT stuff. It uses CAT ET. It uses a standard 7070 pin Atom ECM. And also, a planetary system is very, very strong. At least the design principle of it is also. Something else that's interesting on them is... You could get an end you well it's not an engine retarder it'd be a vehicle retarder that's actually built into this transmission now i've never seen or worked on one that had the retarder in it but the retarder basically works like a brake saver if you know how that works i have a video on that if you don't but it will force it's basically doing the opposite of the torque converter so instead of it building fluid pressure to help drive the vehicle you're forcing fluid into this retarder that's actually slowing down the vehicle 
and it really helps save your brakes and in, conjun in conjunction with jake brakes really really slows down the vehicle so that's a pretty cool design feature i've never seen an allison with a retarder but i'm sure they do exist i just haven't seen it in an on highway application okay so i did name some of the features that were nice about it but what what do i like about the transmission like i already said the test ports are easy to get to on it the solenoids are easy to change it's a cap product this isn't something that someone else built and cap put their name on so it uses cat software if you have a cat engine the transmission now uses the same software which is electronic technician so that's nice the cat wiring i believe cat makes the best wiring at least this truck style wiring where it uses the deutsch pins and amp seal connectors and excellent loom the cat uses electronic wise very good it uses the standard um i'd call it an ecm but it's really a tcm the 70 70 pin uh atom ecm and i wasn't stuttering there when i say 70 70 pin that means there's a 70 pin input and a 70 pin output to the control module now the what else is good on the service change interval if you're running the synthetic fluid which i don't know why you wouldn't run synthetic fluid in a very expensive automatic transmission but the service change interval is every 3,000 miles or 3,000 hours 75,000 miles or three years so fairly long service interval on servicing it uses cat filters which i also believe cat makes the best filters and depending on which design you have it could have the integrated filters that are in the transmission or it could have the external filter like i said it could be ordered with a retarder as well although like i said i'd never seen one that did have that and of course any cat or tep dealer could work on these warranty wise those are pretty interesting features oh it has a planetary gear set so we'll handle a lot of torque and should be long lasting those are the features that i like in the transmission now notice I said that these are the features I like. Do I actually like this transmission? No, no, I do not. And the reason for that is from what I saw of the transmission, it had a lot of failures for not making that many of them. And it's really unfortunate because this is also the same time, 2007 initially, that Caterpillar was having a lot of problems with their regen assert line. So you have all these emission problems and then if let's say you have an rv or a tour bus that has cat transmission a lot of problems with the transmissions themselves now what were the problems we'll get into that this is just from personal experience for me working on them i i didn't go through every serial number on all the transmissions and see what any failures were this is just my recollection of the transmission failures that i saw now remember cat did not make tens of thousands of these they only put them in buses and RVs initially. And now they did put them in the cat truck later, but almost all the cat trucks came with an Eaton manual transmission. Not many people opted for the cat automatic. And for one thing, I believe it's quite a lot more money to go with the cat transmission over an Eaton. Eaton are fairly cheap transmissions. They're fairly bulletproof and universal. The cat transmissions are quite expensive this is where i'm going to get into problems i have with them so they're quite expensive not the initial cost at least of course they'd cost more than a manual transmission but the parts themselves are very expensive i believe this was about 10 years ago the torque converter in the cx i want to say this was the cx 31 was something like eighteen thousand dollars. just the torque converter you could buy several eaton transmissions for the price of that torque converter now maybe that's because that particular one was weird that one had a retarder i remember that one they were experimenting with on one of the cat trucks and the price of that just just blew me away uh the solenoids themselves actually did not fail that much but it did have a lot of problems with the individual clutches themselves we had a customer and they owned several temsa buses t-e-m-s-a now, you may have never heard of Temsa buses. I believe it's a Turkish company. And they make a lot of mostly smaller tour buses, single axle tour buses, not generally the super huge ones you would see for like Greyhound. And they had a bunch of these. They had a C9S and a CX28 transmission. And those buses were in our shop all the time. The company that owned these, I believe, owned about eight or 10 of these app, this particular 
build application or the C9S with the regen system and then these CAT CX28 transmissions. And it was always there for two reasons. It was regen problems and transmission problems. And of course the regen system is a whole different field that doesn't really have anything to do with the transmission, but the transmission problems were usually the same also. They would get a problem where it would throw a code and these generally would throw a code a lot for uh, the, the pressure or an individual solenoid circuit pressure being off. And I would have to go through the troubleshooting. There was kind of a detailed process where you had to calibrate it, where you'd, you'd reset all the calibrations for the solenoids and then you'd drive it at these very specific intervals where you had to stop and put it in gear and put it in reverse. And then you had to accelerate to a certain speed and then let it shift down. And it, it would take a little while and then it would recalibrate, but then it'd be hard shifting again and it would throw a code. Or maybe it wouldn't throw a code, but it'd be hard shifting in a certain gear, two to three or one to two, whatever. And you'd do the calibration and it'd still be hard shifting. You'd pull the screen and up, oh, metal on the screen. You'd pull it out, you'd have to go get it rebuilt at the uh, CRC shop. We never, I, like I said in the beginning of the video, I never rebuilt them myself. So I can't say, oh, it was that clutch three pack that was the real problem. But that was one of the main problems is they would get a hard shifting or a check engine light. And hard shifting a lot of times was a complaint also. And then you would bring it in, you do a calibration, never really seemed to fix it. And transmission itself, something had failed internally. It was a real problem. One of the other problems they had with it, the output shaft or the output yoke bearing seemed to fail a lot or leak a lot. I'm not sure why. It's a fairly simple system and a seal, but I remember it would come in a lot and you would check the, the output yoke and it'd be loose inside the transmission. I don't know what the actual fix for that ever was or why it was doing that, but I know a lot of those had that problem. Now, of course, CAT stopped making on highway transmissions to put in other manufacturer's vehicles in 2010, but in 2012, they did make the CAT truck and you could get the CX-31 in the CAT truck. I'm pretty sure there was not an Allison option. So basically you got an Eaton or the CX-31 transmission. I believe you could get a CX-35 also, but only if you got the CT-15 which very few people ordered the CT-15. They almost all had the CT-11 or CT-13 max force engine. And, but you didn't see many that ordered the extra CAT transmission. And the, the weirdest thing with a CAT truck is, CAT didn't make the software to communicate with the CAT truck since it was basically a Navistar truck with a Navistar engine. It had something called electronic diagnostics, ED which obviously that could stand for something else, but your ET, electronic technician, which is what you use for CAT, didn't work on the CAT trucks, unless it had a CAT transmission. So that's one of the only nice things about the CAT trucks with a CAT transmission. You could actually use CAT electronic technician, which in my opinion, maybe it's just because I'm way more versed in it, is way better software, way easier to use than the electronic diagnostics that CAT had us using on the cat truck for the engine and all the all the other wiring problems probably several of these transmissions still running around in there and some buses and probably quite a few rvs that were built in this model year because cat did make quite a few rv engines in those model years if i had the option i would say opt for an allison if you're going to go with an automatic transmission as far as those model years is it the worst transmission ever built i highly doubt it I actually like the design a lot. It's just, I saw, since this was a new product to market, I saw what I thought, or what I think, is a lot more failures than should have happened with such a small pool of them being made. Not only that, parts nowadays, well, parts are hard to get on just about everything, but even a few years ago, parts were hard to get for these since they made so few of them, and parts in general for them are quite expensive. If you have a truck, go with an Eaton. If you have an RV or a bus, I'd say Allison is probably the way to go. Just thought that was an interesting piece of cat history that now you guys know a little bit about. How about a little destruction of the week? So in this week's destruction of the week, we have a cooling system package out of what I believe is a large wheel loader. And whoever was operating it looks like they found a nice tree to uh, run right through every single cooler on here. CAC, 
condenser, radiator, everything's been just absolutely destroyed. Probably not the best day, uh, whoever did that, but pretty destructive. Thought you'd find it interesting. Thanks for watching.